Here's the three steps I go through with my clients to make sure we get to the right colors. Hi, my name is Rémi Vidro, licensed painter, color consultant, owner of Expressions Painting, and founder of Expressions Painting University. Choosing color can often be frustrating, and I've heard so many stories, and perhaps it, it might even happen to you, where you choose a color and associate a certain vision with it as to how that color will turn out, only to find out it completely looks different. Maybe you're picking a gray and it turns out blue or purple or green or whatever, right? Well. Here's the three steps that I go through with my clients to make sure that when it's all said and done, that the vision they had is what's really going to happen, okay? So the first step is we always start with a fan deck. Now, the benefit of this is that it allows you to see multiple shades and hues all put together. This makes it incredibly easier to see the subtleties between the colors. Now, as an example, I know gray is quite popular these days, but even within the grays, there's a bunch of different undertones like greens or purples that can be there. But when you're just looking at a single swatch, it is very difficult to see those undertones. It's really only once you start comparing them to one another that you see, oh, this is definitely more gray, this is more beige, this has a purplish undertone, green undertone, etc. Okay? So the first step is we go through the fan deck to kind of isolate a tone or a specific color. Now, the second step is this is where we go to this tool here, which is basically all of the same colors, but march on, on the bigger swatches. So these swatches right here. Now, what we do at this point is to really settle on the intensity of that color. So as an example, this, assuming that we've settled on this gray here, well, there's three different intensities of color here that we still need to decide how dark or light we want to go with. And it's by taking this individual swatch without the influence of the others at this point that I would recommend that you bring this and put it on the trims or the, or the thing that would be in the environment at that point to, uh, to make sure that what you're looking at is contrasting with a color that will still be present. And an example of what I mean by this is if you were to take this color and put it directly on a wall that you will be painting over, well the color that's on that wall is not going to be there when it's all said and done. But at the time that you're viewing that color, kind of deciding if it's the right one for you, that color is playing an effect into how your brain perceives that color, okay? So that's why at this point I recommend that you try to bring it to if let's say your trims are a, a, a creamy color and you're going white, well then perhaps look at this color against a white sheet of paper. Or if your trims are not getting painted, then put it against a door and you'll see how it compares to the trim color, right? And finally, the third is lighting. Lighting can have such a big impact in how we'll perceive the color. Uh, and in fact, I did a whole series on, on, on lighting and how we perceive and interpret that if you want, uh, definitely look uh, into our YouTube channel or, uh, paint or uh, website to, to in the color section. You'll see that we went into a lot of, uh, much deeper into the frequencies and the interpretation. But what you need to know is that the type of color and the color temperature that is in each one of those rooms, and this is an important key, is that how you will see a color in your kitchen, as an example, if that color continues in a different room, I definitely recommend to bring that color swatch in that other room to look at it under that particular light, okay? And I'll put a, an example or a few examples at the end of this video is where I demonstrate how drastic a color can turn depending on the environment. So one, perhaps that same color, once you start putting it next to the trims or next to the furniture in the room, it might appear a bit different than you expected. So it's important to look at it in its environment, but then the light can also turn a gray into a beige sometimes, or a blue into an aqua, if, uh, especially when that light has a yellowish undertone, right? a uh, yellowish glow because that will put a layer of yellow on that color. So the first is to try to compare with others, then go to the bigger swatch and look at it in the environment and then especially 
consider the lighting uh, for each one of the rooms where that color will be going. And it's even a good thing to do the test where you look at the color near the sunlight and then underneath the artificial light of that room. You'll see uh, what I tend to do is put the color in an angle like a 45 degree and start near the window and then the uh, slide underneath the particular light, let's say like in a dining room where you'd have a light right over the table. This gives you a really great idea of how the color is going to turn out. Did you get value in this video? Are you currently considering getting your house painted but want to make sure you get to those right colors? This is what we do. This is our specialty. So if you're living in the Greater Moncton area, reach out to me and my team. We'll set up a time to meet for that free first consultation. And then if she, should you proceed with the project, that's where we meet again for that free color consultation. So every project comes with that free color consultation because we realize just how important it is to get to those right colors. We can do the best job in the world as professional painters. If you don't like the colors when it's all said and done, it won't have mattered much. So that's why we make sure to integrate a perfect painting experience along with the right colors for you. Thank you for watching and I look forward to meeting with you or to see you again next week.